I don't know about you, uh, but I haven't been able to stop thinking of Thomas O'Halloran all day. I haven't been able to stop thinking about what the brutal killing of this 87-year-old beloved grandfather on his mobility scooter from which he raised money for victims of the Ukraine war means for British society. This is the sort of heinous crime that in years gone by would have stopped the nation and united politicians across the political spectrum in horror. But in this current climate, it feels to me there's almost a quiet acceptance. It's just another horrific killing as the woke police lose control of Sadiq Khan's lawless London. But we can't quietly accept the epidemic of crime sweeping from London across the rest of Britain. After all, the shocking and unprovoked attack on Mr Halloran was London's sixth slaying in just four days. Meanwhile, according to police statistics, violent crime offences in England and Wales have skyrocketed from just over 601,000 in uh, the year 2012-2013 to 2.1 million in the year ending March 2022. Thanks to social media, we see the crimes being committed on a daily basis as the criminals go about their dastardly business seemingly without a care in the world. OK, something serious. Yeah, we need to go back now. This horrifying increase of violent crime offences by 1.5 million in a decade should be seen as a damning indictment of the state of policing in this country. Its coppers focus on serving the woke mob as Orwellian-style thought police instead of fighting violent crime. Failed London Mayor Sadiq Khan has set the tone, caring more about pathetic virtue signalling over green extremism, taking the knee patrolling lockdown and diversity quotas rather than the safety of Londoners. That's even as knife crime runs rife. Of course, he's blamed the cost of living crisis, the school holidays and even the weather, even the weather for this latest crime wave. Afraid this summer we are seeing what we feared, which is uh, an increase in violent crime as there are longer daylight hours, uh, school holidays, heat, uh, heat wave and uh, so forth. We are working with the police uh, to suppress that uh, violence. That is pathetic. As former Conservative leader Sir Ian Duncan Smith, a Liz Truss supporter, said, London is inundated with crime at the moment, and apart from putting out statements, Sadiq Khan has done next to nothing on this. We have gang warfare on the streets of London and some boroughs, yet Mr Khan's priorities seem to be elsewhere. He needs to make this his number one priority and focus on getting rid of these gangs. Many constituents cannot see the point in him. Now, as regular viewers know, uh, I am very engaged in this subject personally, having been mugged three times while walking the streets of the city I love in the past three years. And I was one of the lucky ones, uninjured. The gangs of thugs on mopeds and the little hood rats on bikes just wanted my phone. And they know there'll be so little consequence. Now, theft has effectively been decriminalised with just a tiny proportion of burglaries and muggings now leading to prosecution. But Thomas O'Halloran wasn't so lucky. Next time I might not be. Or your mother, brother, boyfriend, husband, wife. So as a society, the onus is on us now to demand the new prime minister to start making law and order a top priority from next month. Yes, the police were wrongly starved of resources by Theresa May and we're now playing catch up. But this is largely a matter of what's seen as important. And when it comes to our police, it must be stopping violent crime rather than pursuing internet trolls and futile historic allegations by fantasists. Mayor Khan should stop trying to decriminalise drugs by going on jollies to California and stop the murders taking place on the streets he promised to protect.